In part one of this topic, we started creating the dashboard interface for our workbook. Now that we have some basic elements in place, including kind of the outline of the header and a title, we need to start creating some of the functionality. What we want to start with are what will become our hyperlinks to categories or areas of the workbook that users may want or need to access. They're usually not going to stay just on the dashboard. Now, some people try to do this using text in the shape that we just created, but because we want each entry to be clickable separately from others, we're going to create individual rectangle drawing shapes, enter some text, and turn those into hyperlinks. So back we're going again to the Insert tab, back to our drawing shapes, and this time we can just use regular rectangles. We'll click and drag to create something that's about the right size, and we'll go ahead and format it so that it matches the background that we already have. That means using the dark blue fill, as well as the dark blue outline from our theme. Of course, we could also do the opposite and have it have no fill and no border, and then place it on top of our area, both accomplishing the same thing, which is basically going to make it disappear. What we need to do next, though, is enter some text. We can either double click or we can right click and choose Edit Text. This is going to be the first link that's going to allow people to come back to this health summary dashboard. Since many people who use dashboards actually don't know that that's what they're technically called, we don't want to say return to dashboard or anything like that. That's kind of technical. We want to make it intuitive. So we'll type the text, resize it so everything fits, make sure that we align it to the center, and then move it up onto the bottom of our nav bar where we've made space for these hyperlink shapes. Notice how it disappears once we put it on top of the other shape that already has the same color. Often in workbooks, we want users to have access to multiple areas. So as they say, we can do this the easy way or we can do this the easier way. And I always prefer the easier way, and that is to copy and paste. So with our first rectangle selected, we'll just do a copy and paste. I like to do that with the keyboard shortcut, Control C and Control V, and then we can use the arrow keys to move it over and move it up. Now, please don't worry too much about how even these are, because I never want you to align these visually. I guarantee that if you try to do it visually, they're going to be just a little bit off, and we want things to be as perfect as possible. So instead, let's go ahead and use our Align tools from the Format tab. We need to make sure that we have at least two elements selected, so we'll hold the Control key and click our other link. Then we can activate Format, move over to the right-hand side, and in the Arrange group, we can choose Align, and we can align at the top, middle, or the bottom because they're exactly the same size. We'll go ahead and choose Align Middle. If we had multiple items, we could also use the Distribute commands to make sure that they were evenly spaced along the bottom of our dashboard header. Now that they're aligned, we'll deselect and then select our second one. And of course, we want to change that text to be something different. This is ultimately going to link to another worksheet about personal information. So we'll just erase what's here and add personal info. Now we're really starting to make progress, but there's one more thing that we need to do that's one of those you'll never see it unless you knew it was done things. And that is to make sure that even though we may be working with the other elements of the worksheet, in other words, we could be changing the width of columns. We do not want these to change at all. So we're going to select all of our items. That includes our two rectangles that are filled with text, the shape that we used for the bottom of our tracker, the title text box, and the main shape itself. Once they're selected, we can right click on any one of them and come almost all the way down to the bottom of the shortcut menu and choose Size and Properties. This is going to bring up the Properties panel on the right side of the screen. We'll go ahead and collapse down the Size category because what we're interested in is under Properties. Notice the default says Move in Size with Cells. That's not what we want. We want to check the third option that says Do not move or size with cells. We also want to make sure that the Print Object option is checked. So if we want to make hard copies by printing this out, our beautiful dashboard will be included as part of that printout. Once we've made that change, we can go ahead and close the Properties panel. Now, when we discuss general best practices for dashboard design, we said that using pictures or images is not considered a best practice unless it's a logo for business branding purposes. I stand by that recommendation. But if you wanted to have a logo, of course, you could make that part of this initial design process. Simply using the Insert tab, we can insert a picture or clip art and place it usually along the right or left edge of our main navigation bar. For our regular production file, we're probably going to spend a little bit more time 
zoomed in a little bit closer to make sure that all of these things are just perfect. But this is basically how we create the structure of the navigation bar itself. If we have a lot of data, or if we're going to be working for mobile devices, or if we just want to separate things out and are going to use a multi-tab or multi-page interface, where our users will actually be working with or working on other worksheets, we can copy this entire worksheet as many times as is necessary, and we don't have to go through these steps multiple times. We're going to allow our users to customize some of their health goals and personal information, so we're going to create one copy. We want to do that the easiest, most efficient way possible, so we'll move down to our tabs at the bottom of the screen. We'll right-click our current tab, which is the Summary tab, and we'll choose Move or Copy. We're going to keep it in the same workbook, and we'll actually put it before the Personal Info to Copy worksheet that's already there. Don't forget to check Create a Copy before clicking or tapping OK. Now we have a perfect second copy. We'll go ahead and double-click on the tab so that we can rename it Personal Info. Press Enter to save it. Now we can do just a little bit of cleanup by activating the Personal Info to Copy worksheet, and we're simply going to copy and paste this information. We'll click in cell A4 and do a quick paste. If we resize our A and B columns a little bit to better accommodate our data, notice that our dashboard does not adjust along with it. That's why we wanted to make sure that we made the proper adjustments under our properties earlier. And now that we've copied the information, we can actually delete the Personal Info to Copy worksheet, verify that that's OK, and we're good to go with our personal information and our dashboard worksheet. So in the first two parts of this topic, we've created the basic interface. In part three, we'll go ahead and add those hyperlinks to make our navigation bar truly functional.